it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day eight of my 2021 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be using the Hello Bluebird Gnome for the Holidays stamp set. So I've stamped my images out on two panels of Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with my gnome's skin and there's very little of it showing so I'm using my basic combo for Caucasian skin which is E000, E00, and E11. I did a shadow up under the hat as I normally would and then also a little shadow where the beard is meeting the face just to make that beard look extra poofy so it would cast a shadow on that part. I'm gonna skip over the nose for now. I want that to be a little bit of a darker shade. So I'm just using that E11 as the darkest and then blending out with the E00. I did add a little shadow around the nose on the right hand side and then use the E000 for the highlight. And then for the nose to darken that up, I'm going to add in E13 and take away the E000. So I use the E13 and then the E11 and the E00. And I did the ears on the two that are showing with just those darkest two shades, since there's very little there to color. I wanted to do the beards in an unexpected shade rather than the typical white or gray that you normally see. And I was thinking about that movie, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. It's a Rankin and Bass movie similar to Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, which I talked about in a previous video. Um, but this one is like the origin story of Saint Nicholas or Santa Claus. And um, when he was a young boy and a young man, he had red hair and he came to live with the Kringles who were the toy makers to the king. And um, that is how he learned to make toys and also where he got his classic red outfit with the red stocking cap type of thing. Um, that was all from the Kringle family, if you've never seen that movie. But anyway, he had red hair, and so I thought it would be fun to do these guys with red beards. So I chose YR12, YR14, and YR18. I wanted the ends to be the darkest, and then it gets lighter toward the face. So I started with the YR18 down at the bottom, and kind of followed the artist drawn lines, and then blended up with the YR14, and then used the YR12 closest to the face. And then I did do a second layer on all of that coloring just to deepen up that saturation and get that blend really nice and smooth. I normally always do two layers on my coloring, except for occasionally very small images if they don't look like they need it. Otherwise, I generally do, but it does make the video quite long if I include all of it. I tried to leave the coloring for everything with the second coat in just for a change so you guys could really see how um, I go through my entire process, but the video ended up being an hour and 15 minutes long. And I know you guys do not have time for that. So I did have to shorten it and cut out the second layer of a lot of it, but I left in a few little bits here and there so that you could see how that really changes the look of things. I used just YR14 and YR18 for their eyebrows. And now I'm going to move on to a red combo and I chose R24, R29, and R39. I'm going to use these shades for the stocking cap. So I'm using the R39 first to lay in my shadows. I generally shade my images in the direction that they're facing. So because these guys are all facing forward, their shadows are going to be on both the left and the right, and the highlights will be in the center. So I'm adding that R39 to create that dimension and then blending toward the middle with the R29, and then I'll come in with the R24. I'm gonna do little circular motions at the edge of the R29 to break up that color and get it to blend nicely, and then I'll fill in the centers. 
and then I will continue with the other two guys. I'm going to color all of their outfits the same, but I'm not going to do just the traditional red and green or anything like that. I wanted to pick a kind of non-traditional color palette for today's card. So I found this picture on Pinterest. I was scrolling through different color palettes and it was a photo of some blood oranges and strawberries on like a marbly gray background or like a cement surface. You don't see a lot of the background, but the colors were a deep red, a bright red, a salmon pink, orange, and then two tones of gray. And I thought that was really interesting. It looked very festive because of the red, but it wasn't like in your face Christmassy. And I thought that would be fun. So yeah, if you ever are struggling for different color combos and you can't seem to find something that's like out of the box or a little bit unusual to what you typically reach for, Try looking on Pinterest or even Google and search for color combos or uh, color palettes and you'll get so many photos that come up and um, really inspire you. I use that all the time to come up with different combos for the cards that I make. Or if you don't want to search for them yourself, you can also just follow me on Pinterest. I have a whole Pinterest board dedicated to color combos with probably hundreds of entries. So you can find that link way down at the bottom in the description bar. So I did the bow on the Christmas wreath with that same combo and now I've moved on to a slightly lighter combo. I kept the R24 and the R29 but I added in the R22 instead of the R39. And I'm going to do the candy cane stripes both in the gnome's hand that he has kind of held behind his back and also there is one sticking out of that little sack of gifts. So I'm just blending from the bottom toward the top, darkest to lightest. So we get a little bit of that salmony pink at the top edge where the light would be hitting. And then I'm going to lighten that even further. I took away the R29 and added in the R21. And I'm going to use this to color in their shirts. So this is going to be that salmon pink combo that is represented in that color palette that I was describing. So I'm using that R24 as the darkest and doing some little shadows on the underside of their sleeves, a little bit deeper on this guy's right sleeve because he's holding that Christmas tree in his arms and then also on the sides of his body and then blending toward the middle with the R22 and then the R21 and there you can see I did add a second layer of the R22 and the R21 because the R21 is quite a bit lighter so it will push that R22 out of the way so in order to get that to blend you really do need that second coat of those darker or excuse me, the lighter two shades. I didn't bother adding in a second coat of the R24 because I felt like there was enough contrast there. But I did, you can see that R21 is kind of just pushing that out of the way. I'm gonna move on to my third little guy um, and do his little shirt, what you can see of it behind his little gift there. But I will go back and do that second layer on that top on both of them and the sleeves. Uh, there you can see it with the R22 and then a touch of the R21 to just blend that toward the center. My next combo I'm going to go even a bit lighter. I'm using R11, R20, and R21. I use the R11 and the R21 to do some rosy cheeks on the gnomes to just make them look extra cheerful. Also, it's going to be a snowy scene that they're out in, so I wanted them to have a little bit of pink to their cheeks. And then I also did color the bunny in the little gift bag with these shades. But I'm going to end up changing out this image later on and coloring it in some different combos. And I'll explain why when I get to it. But uh, for now, I'm also going to color in the gift in this little gnome's hands. 
Next, I'm going to bring in some grays. I'm using T0, T1, T3, and T5 for the different tones of gray, but for now I'm starting with just those darker three shades, and I'm going to do their pants to be kind of like a charcoal shade. So I'm using that T5 to add some shading on the two legs and also between the legs, and also right under the shirt where that would be casting a shadow. And then I blended that out with the T3 and the T1. And I'll do the other guys the same. So now that I have that gray in the mix, you can kind of see my vision for this color palette coming together. So adding that charcoal, I think, just really makes the other colors pop and uh, pulls the whole palette together. So I'm going to finish up their pants with the T1, just coloring in the legs, making those look nice and soft and worn. And then I'm going to use the T0 and the T1 to color in their little boots. Just a touch of the T1, and then I'm going to blend that out with the T0. And I did leave a little tiny bit of white space on each of those as well. And then I gave them mittens to match for the two guys that you can see their little hands. I think you could do them as hands or as mittens either way. And then I'm going to use the T0 to add just a touch of shading to the white parts of the candy cane and to the little pom-poms on their hats. And I'm also going to use it to color in the snow just to add a touch of shading. I was really trying hard to stick to this color palette. I didn't want to introduce like a blue that I would normally use. Like a, I would normally use like a BG10 to add a little bit of shading to the snow, but I wanted to keep this color palette just as it was. So I decided to use that T0 and I did it for the snow that is on the mushroom house as well. And then I used my colorless blender to just soften up the edge of that. I also did the little house in the sack with T1 and T0, and then I did the roof with T5 and T3, and I don't think I even bothered with the T1 because there wasn't enough space there, but I did color in the door with those shades as well, and then left the windows blank. And then I'm also going to do the little bear to be like a stuffed polar bear. So I used T0 to add some shading to him and then T1 to color in his muzzle. And then before I put those colors away, I wanted to do the chimney on the little mushroom house. So I started with the T5 and did kind of like a rounded X on the top part, that little half circle dome create a shiny look and then I did a line down the bottom part and a little shadow um, where the top meets it and then I blended out with the T3 and then I'm using the T1 to soften that up even further and then I'll use the T0 to finish that off and I left just a sliver of white to make it look metallic. Then I wanted to introduce an even deeper red combo, so I pulled out my old favorite Christmas red, which was R29, R39, and R59. Um, now my favorite combo is take away the 59 and add in the 24, like I used on the hats, because I just like that touch of the 24 that adds that bit of brightness to the center. But, um, this combo is very similar and um, I thought it would be a little bit deeper than the hats, but when everything is kind of dried back, the difference isn't very noticeable. So I probably would have added in an even darker red in the mix or maybe even a dark brown to do some shading and taking out the R29 just to make it a little bit different. but. It's fine. It just looks like a very similar red, but it's totally fine. So I used that to color in the little sack of gifts, but like I said, I am going to end up changing that out in a little bit, and I'll explain why when I get to that part, but 
Um, I also did the mushroom caps in this combo. I wanted them to look nice and deep red under that snow so the snow would really pop. So I did all four of those. There's two different mushrooms. Um, you can see the little bit of the snow drift is different and also the stems are a little bit different. One is wider than the other. But I wanted to have four mushrooms so I just stamped each of them twice and um, that's how I got four. So I'm going to just finish coloring those in with this combo. I put the shadow up at the top because the snow would be casting a shadow there. So the highlight is more toward the bottom center on those guys. And then I'm gonna use that combo to color in the top of the mushroom house as well. So again, just taking that R59 and doing like a deep shadow where that snow would be um, piled up there. So it would really be casting that shadow. And then I also did a little shadow at the bottom edge for the house since um, there's enough of a space on the top left where the light would be hitting that. So my shadow will be a little bit different on the house than the small mushrooms because they're basically almost completely covered at the top with the snow. So I'm gonna blend it out with the R39 and then that R29, just working my way carefully over that R39 so I get a nice smooth blend and taking that all the way up to the black line and then I'm going to go back and do the little gift bow on the gift that the far right gnome is holding. So I just used that same exact combo and finished that off. And then here is where I decided to modify that color palette slightly. I could have done the mushroom stems in gray as well, but I just felt like there was too much gray in the scene, um, especially when I get to like the background and everything, when I considered everything that I would have to color gray, I just felt like it was gonna be too much. So I decided to pull in these really pale browns. Um, they're very similar to the skin tone, so it, it doesn't, I think, doesn't look too out of place in this scene. So it's E50, E51, and E53. I did the four tiny mushroom stems and I'm also going to do the mushroom house to match. So I'm using that E53 first to do some shading on both sides and then I cast a little shadow around the window and the door with that E53 as well. And now I'm pulling that color in toward the center with the E51. If I were to color this again, I do think I would have switched the shadows on the door and the window to the right side because of that heavy snow drift on that side. I feel like that would have looked better, but because those little lines were drawn around the window on the left, um, I just automatically went to where the lines were and put it on the left. But in the end, I don't think it's super noticeable. The shadows aren't really deep, so... Um, I think it's totally fine. So I did the same for the ribs on the underside of the mushroom cap, just blending with those three shades. Went back over the lines with that E53 to really make them stand out, and then blended that out again from the top edge with the E51, and left it a little bit lighter closer to the house. I didn't want to introduce a darker brown though, so I did go with a slightly darker gray combo to do the trunk of the Christmas tree. I used T3, T5, and T7, and I'm going to use those on the door and the little window crossbar as well. So I'm just outlining the sections of the door with the T7 to start and also doing a very thin line on that window. And then I'm going to blend that out with the T5. I just wanted that door to have a bit more contrast so that it would not get lost in all of the other gray combos. So I'm blending that out with the T5 and then I'm gonna come in with the T3 to finish that up. 
Um, I ended up leaving some space because I felt like it could go a little bit lighter. So I will pull in the T1 as well. And then I realized that I didn't put a shadow on the far part of the door. So I just went back and did that with my T7 and T5. And then I'm going to pull in that T1, like I said, and finish off the door. So I think it needed that or it would have looked too heavy. I didn't want it to look like a prison inside, you know. I just wanted it to be, you know, like an old weathered door in the forest where these guys have been living for centuries, you know. Um, just a happy little home, so. I pulled back T0 to do the shading of the glass in the window since I didn't want to add any blue. And then I used the T0 for the door handle as well. And also the star on the Christmas tree. And then here is where I decided to go ahead and introduce some green. Originally I was not going to. I was just going to color the tree and the wreath to be white using more grays. But like I said, I just felt like it was getting too dark with the grays. And when I took a look at that, inspiration photo the strawberries in the photo did have their stems on them so there were tiny little pops of green on this um, inspiration photo that I was using so I thought it would be okay to have just a couple little um, green pops on the card as well so I went with G40 G43 and G46 they're a little bit more of a duller green. They're kind of like an olivey toned green, a little bit brighter than that, but they're not too in your face. So I felt like they wouldn't like take over in this scene. So I'm gonna take all of these images and trim them out with the matching dyes. For my background, I took the Hello Bluebird Summer Wood scene and die cut that out of white cardstock, also narwhal cardstock from Lawn Fawn. And I created a slimline card base from some grout gray cardstock from MFT. Then I took all of the little bushes that I die cut from the Spectrum Noir cardstock. And I'm going to add just a touch of evergreen bow to the tops of them. I want them to look like the bushes are covered in snow. And then just these little spiky bits are sticking out of the snow so you can see the green underneath. So I'm just carefully going on the very edges with that. And then once I have those done, I'm also going to do the same with the leafy treetops, except this time I'm going to do it at the bottom. So the snow would be sitting at the top of the trees and the little bits of some greenery are kind of poking out from the edges. So I'm gonna have all of those colored in the same. And then once I finish up this last one, I'm going to take some of this ink and press it onto an acrylic block. I'll water that down with my Distress Sprayer and I'm going to pick that up with a very thin paintbrush and tap that against the edge. So I get this splatter detail that looks like little leaves poking out of the snow here and there. For the snow bank, I'm going to use some Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide and I'm going to just add that to the very edge as well. I don't want the snow to look dirty. I just want it to have some shadow from the night sky. And this is going to be similar to the shading I did with that T0 on the mushrooms and mushroom house. I also added a bit of that to the card base. I wanted the sky to have a little bit of a gradient effect. So I just added a little blending on there. Not a ton of that will show, so it didn't need to be absolutely perfect. And then I'm popping out these little gray trees from the gray version, and I'm going to darken those up with some hickory smoke as well. Uh, it didn't show up that well on them because this is pretty close. The Lawn Fawn Narwhal cardstock is very similar in tone to that hickory smoke. I don't have a darker gray Distress Oxide, but it really did need a little bit more definition. 
Adding some black soot, which was my only other option, would have made them too dark for the color palette I was already working with. So what I decided to do was to take my black soot mini ink blending tool and just use whatever ink was left on that sponge from the last time I used it, which was who knows how long ago, and let that be the little bit of definition. So I just went over the sides and top of that, and that ended up working perfectly. I decided to do some splatter on those as well, just to give them a bit more interest. So I went back to my hickory smoke and just did the same thing, tapping that brush against the side of the block. And then I'm gonna set all of these aside to dry. Once I was ready to start assembling, I started with the frame. I just find that easiest to do. So I'm using my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue to add a tiny bead of glue all the way around the outside edge of the frame. And for right now, I'm just using the white one to kind of contain everything in there so it all fits together nicely. But I will cover this up with a different color later on. So I'm just making sure that that is nice and straight with all four edges of the card, because if it's not straight, you'll have a little bit of a difficulty fitting everything in there. Um, for this version, it wouldn't be so bad because I'm not using all the little sky pieces. I decided it would be easier to just use the card base as my sky. And now I'm adding that snow drift strip right over top. And yes, it does have the little bit of grass poking out, but you're barely going to see that in the final card because most of that will get covered up. Then I decided to do the top pieces. So I'm taking the two tree parts that have a flat side, just like when you're working with a puzzle, it's often easier to do the outside edges first and then work your way toward the center. So that's kind of what I was doing. And then I'm just looking for the little marks that are cut out of the bottom of the tree trunk so I can make sure that I get them on there just perfectly and then they'll just go right up to meet that tree top that I've already glued down. And then I'm going to do the one on the right hand side the same way, just looking for those little grass cuts that are going to fit perfectly. And then it's really easy to find where they belong. The third tree is only slightly trickier, but not too bad because you do have those little grass cutouts again. So I'm using the, those to do the tree trunk first um, because it's just easier to find that than to try to find where the top goes. But then you can really easily fit the tree top in where they belong in those branches. So then you have all the little grassy bits, which you could have left them out from this card. Um, it would be perfectly fine to just have the snowdrift at the bottom, but I thought they would add a little bit more interest. And since I decided to add in that little bit of green here and there, I thought it would be fun to have these there as a little accent in the back. Some of them are gonna get covered up, but others you'll be able to see a little bit of. And again, they're really easy to find where they go just based on the different cutouts. Um, and what you can also do is just set the die in front of you and use that as a guide to where everything belongs as well. And just follow the different shapes there, but just remember that it's in the reverse. So I'm gonna finish with this last little grassy patch. And then I wanted to add a little more interest to those trees. So I'm taking a T3 marker. It's gonna be a subtle detail, but a lot of these trees are gonna get covered up as well. So I'm not spending too much time on it. I'm doing a couple little whirls and burls and then a couple little streaky lines here and there just to indicate some movement and some grooves in that tree bark. Then I popped my card base in my Misty so I could stamp the sentiment. I was using Lawn Fawn Lobster ink and I knew I was taking a risk here stamping with a dye ink over Distress Oxides. They don't lay well over it, um, but I just wanted that red sentiment originally. I thought it would look really nice, but it didn't end up working out. So I'm gonna have to change directions on that as well. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to stamp on the inside of the card. 
and I decided to use the lobster ink for that as well. So I'm doing the gnome that is pulling the sleigh full of gifts. And then I built a sentiment that says, Merry Christmas from our gnome to yours. So there you can see how the sentiment just didn't dry nicely. It looked very dull. So I'm going to re-stamp that on another piece of white cardstock using Versafine Onyx Black ink. And then I'm going to take one of the nesting circle dies from Hello Bluebird and just find one that is the right size. And I will die cut that sentiment and add a little bit of that Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide ink, just using that little sponge once again to darken up the edges. So it'll kind of look like a moon in my scene. So I'll glue that down right over top of the old sentiment and I'm going to carefully try to slide that up underneath the tree on the right just to integrate it a little bit more in the scene and make it look more like a moon, like it's a little bit back behind there. Then I'm going to start with my largest image, which is the mushroom house. And I'm going to add that to the scene kind of between the two trees on the left, but a little bit more toward the center one. And very quickly before that dries, I want to get the little guy that I want to stand between the house and the moon because I want to make sure that he's not covering up any of that sentiment. So I did have to shift that house a little bit more toward the left and then I added him in that space so that the star on his Christmas tree is kind of pointing toward that sentiment. So it really helps integrate that into the scene even more. Then I'm going to take the guy that has the candy cane behind his back and I'm going to add him over on the left hand side. And the little guy that is sitting down is going to go over on the right. And now you can see that I re-stamped and recolored that little bag. Um, I decided that I wanted one more pop of green since I had the green wreath and the green tree. I felt like I needed one more thing in green because all of the background is also in groups of three. There's three treetops and three groups of the grasses. So I just felt like I needed one more thing of green. So I recolored that. I also changed the color of the bunny from the pink to the tan that I used for the mushroom bottoms. So I'm going to uh, add one of the little mushrooms over on the right hand side and then I'm going to take two more mushrooms and add them kind of toward the middle between the two gnomes on the right. So I'm making sure to use two different mushrooms so that they don't look too much the same. And then the final mushroom is gonna go way over on the left behind the candy cane for some balance. And then I'll take the wreath and add that to the center of the door. So I wanted to add a frame in kind of an unexpected color. So I went with Lawn Fawn Guava cardstock because it's kind of that salmon pink that is the same as their shirts. So that'll just kind of tie that color in. And I'm going to line that up right over top of the previous frame and just glue that down so it's on there nice and straight. And then to finish up this card, I had to add a little Stardust Stickles. So I wanted to make the edge of that snow look nice and bright again, since it was a little bit dull with that gray shading. So I went right over that with the Stardust Stickles, because then it's going to really catch the light and look nice and sparkly. I also added some to the bow on the wreath and the roof and door of the little house in the gift bag and also to the bow on the gift. And that's going to complete my card for today. So I'll lift that up so you can see how it catches the light and give you another peek at the inside. Thank you guys for sticking with me. If you're still watching, I really appreciate it. I know this was a longer one. So if you enjoyed it anyway, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I love chatting with you guys. 
Make sure you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. And if you're interested in any of these products, you'll find them listed and linked down below. If you'd like to keep watching, here is day eight of the previous two years of holiday card series. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you guys so much again for watching. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.